You know, one of the things I do find fascinating about professional wrestling, and especially the fans, media as well, is how freaking nosy we are. Like, we worry about what wrestlers do outside of the ring, do to each other, do with each other, if you will. We just saw a recent example of that. And then we start focusing on, you know, contract statuses and who's going where. But that's no different than what you see in sports. Or many other things. Like, that's true. It's still interesting nonetheless. But, you know, we recently saw, and I know I'm a couple of days behind the curve here talking about it, but better late than never. Uh, but obviously one of the big news items that dropped last week is that Kevin Owens has actually re-signed with WWE. Which is a bit of a curveball, I think, for some. Perhaps for many. They were assuming that Kevin Owens was just going to kind of ride out the string and that Kevin Owens, while thankful for the opportunity and platform WWE gave him over the past several years, was ready to go somewhere else and do something different, specifically go to AEW, you know, and get to be Kevin Steen and maybe he brings Sami Zayn with him and they could be El Generico and they could do all that old school decade plus old ROH bullshit all over again. So... Certainly can imagine that it caught a number of people by surprise when they found out that Kevin Owens had indeed re-signed with WWE. And you saw a lot of people passing judgment on it, saying, well, that's stupid. Why would you do that? They're not going to use you well enough creatively, you know, or they were just wanted to see him in AEW, regardless of whether or not that was going to really work out all that well. And let's be clear here, when you talk about AEW bringing in some of these recently released or recently free agent dub, former WWE guys and gals, you know, the results are very mixed. Let's not pretend like Tony Khan has this goddamn Midas touch where everything he touches turns to gold or that everybody he brings in that he figures out how to feature well. He doesn't. See Andrade. That's one example of several. So... I think it was more so a lot of people just wanted him to see him go to AEW because they love AEW more. They want to see AEW succeed more. They think that he would be a great fit. And fundamentally, I don't necessarily disagree. Like, in a bubble, Kevin Owens feels like the type of guy that goes back to being Kevin Steen, goes to AEW, and now you're telling him he can swear on TV and... You know, do Kevin Steen type of shit, which is a whole different level than Kevin Owens, while incorporating some of the lessons learned from his time in WWE. You know, yeah, like I, I understand it. You feel like, hey, he's going to get even more freedom on the microphone. And when he does, he's a top dude in that respect. And I don't disagree with that. I get it. And you're fantasizing about some of the different matches he could have and blah, blah, blah. Again, I get it. Now, certainly, if he and uh, Sami Zayn had signed with AEW, probably the, one of the first or two feuds that they would have would be with fucking each other because that's the last goddamn thing we need, right? But you saw a lot of people passing judgment on this one, shitting on Kevin Owens for re-signing with WWE. And here's a couple of things to say. Number one, fuck you if you did. It's his business and he'll do what he wants. Number two, fuck you. It's his business. He'll do what the hell he wants. And number three, number three, most importantly of all, see number one and two. No. Do you know all the damn particulars and details of the offer he ultimately got from WWE and the contract that he signed? Do you know what AEW was even willing to offer if he had even had any conversations with them? Do you think there could have been a piece that maybe he didn't want it? turn things over. Maybe he liked the stability that he had with WWE. I'm not sitting here trying to make a WWE puff piece or defend them. But I mean, that's the reality is if you don't know Kevin Owens' motivations, then why are you saying anything about his decision to sign there? Like, I would get it if you were saying, hey, Kevin Owens is like Adam Cole and a couple of these others and they've got big followings on Twitch and that generates, you know, Potentially 100, 200, 250,000 of additional revenue for them a year. 
You know, that's why I totally understood why Adam Cole went from a bigger platform in WWE to a smaller platform in AEW because the level that he's at in WWE, he can't tell me he was possibly getting paid more or going to get paid more than what he could overall make in AEW. It made sense for him to become a big fish in a smaller pond. It just did. Especially when you talk about the Twitch money. Like, that's not insignificant here, folks. But I don't think Kevin Owens is one of those types of dudes. So you're more or less just basically talking about the, the wrestling contracts. And now you can certainly sit there and say, why would you want to work with WWE where you could go to AEW and you have more creative freedom in theory? You have a less strenuous road schedule. You work fewer dates. And I will tell you, some of those are appealing options. Like if you're saying the money is pretty similar, but maybe AEW is a little more or a little less, the thing that might tip the scale is less traveling, less strenuous schedule, pretty appealing compared to the meat grinder that could be the WWE sometimes, even nowadays, which is not nearly as strenuous as it used to be. But who knows what his motivations were? The one thing I would caution to Kevin Owens, and I, I believe actually Sami Zayn has been reported to have signed a new contract to WWE as well, is be careful. Like the one thing I would stress and emphasize for these talents, especially now that you have an AEW, I know there are some reports that Vince McMahon is against the no-cut clause contracts, um, but you need to do something to better protect yourselves. Because otherwise, you're going to be like Gallows and Anderson, the Broad Strowmans, the Bray Wyatts of the world. You sign some big, massive contract extension, then a quarter or halfway or sometimes less of the way through, now that they fucking undercut your leverage, that's a Vince McMahon, Nick Khan tactic all the way. We're going to re-sign him and offer this money, but it's like an NFL fucking contract. Half of plus of it is Fugazi, Fugazi. It's fucking fake. It's not real. You're never going to realize or see it. So they'll sign you, and then cut you to undercut your leverage. That's the one thing that I kind of do question a little bit about the decision. As I saw a report, I think it was on Wrestling Inc., may have gotten it from somewhere else, where Kevin Owens' new deal apparently does not have a no-cut clause. Apparently Sami Zayn, similarly reportedly signed, also does not have a no-cut clause. And that Vince McMahon is adamantly opposed to a no-cut clause. Well, no fucking shit, of course he is. It makes total sense why. Because if you need to cut expenses, even though they don't, you could just cut somebody, only have to pay them for the 90-day no, non-complete, non-complete, compete, or 30-day non-compete. Jesus Christ, easy for me to say, huh? Like, that makes sense. And if you've got the chance to undercut the competition that you don't pretend is competition, that isn't entirely competition, but it's kind of competition, even though you're not fully playing the same game here, but just to be petty Vince, like, that absolutely makes sense from their standpoint. And these talents, these superstars, have got to start standing their ground a little bit more. I'm not talking about necessarily the need to unionize, but you either got to do one or two things. You either got to try and go down the NBA, MLB route with your contracts of saying, every dollar that I get is guaranteed whether you fucking cut me or not. Leverage AEW as your damn leverage. And if WWE isn't willing to give it to you, probably AEW will. Vince McMahon is adamantly opposed to it. Okay, good for fucking him. Exercise your leverage. If he wants you bad enough, he will pay for it. If he doesn't, then he doesn't. You've still got somewhere else to go. The other alternative is if you're not able to go down the no-cut clause space of like the NBA, Major League Baseball, where even if you cut me, all that money is 100% guarantee, then these goddamn talents have got to start sitting there and thinking about these contracts from WWE as NFL type of contracts and getting signing bonuses and getting all that fucking money up front. Now you can say perhaps in the case of a Kevin Owens, you're saying, well, what that leave him on his downside guarantee for however long he has, and maybe it's a very low downside guarantee. That perhaps is true, but if I'm a Kevin Owens and I say, hey, you know, maybe I'm going to sit there and get a million and a half, two million a year. I'm not sure what the deals are. I'm just making up numbers. 
But instead of that getting spaced out a year over five years when the very likelihood that I'm not going to get it, you know, I need to sit there and say, you're going to give me $5 million right now. That's my signing bonus. That's the starting point. Guaranteed, no matter what, you walk out of that fucking deal with $5 million. If Vince McMahon doesn't do it, then Tony Khan either doesn't, does, or he does something different, such as guaranteeing your contract with a no-cut clause. Or just guaranteeing the contract in general. Now, these guys and gals have got to start thinking differently, especially when you're getting to the point where WWE is proactively coming to you to renegotiate, when they are proactively coming to you to give you a new contract. Learn from the mistakes of others. Don't be in a spot nine months, a year from now, where you fucking get cut. Where they've offered you this vision of a pot of gold that you were never going to get. And then you lose your leverage to go to the other place. That's stupid. Don't do that. Leverage the competition. Leverage the alternative. Leverage your leverage. Especially when you're somebody like Kevin Owens. You don't think Tony Khan and AEW are going to be interested? Give me a fucking break. Of course they would. It's only natural they would. So to find out that he doesn't have, he has no guarantees or no cut clause, that's just ridiculous to me. And I do question that. And more of these top names, these bigger names in WWE are going to start needing to make a fucking stand. It's not even, like I said, it's not even about having to unionize and that's going to fix anything. It's about the fact of understanding the goddamn game and situation that you're in, the environment that you're in, and leveraging your leverage that you do have. Either go the NBA MLB route and say, every single dollar of this contract needs to be guaranteed no matter how you use me, no matter how much I'm on TV, no matter how much you want to get rid of me. If you do, fine. And if you say, well, then you can't compete for two or three years because that's the length of the no-compete no clause. You mean I get to get paid big contract for two or three years and sit my funky ass at home and maybe do some independent spot shows and get decent payouts for that? Sign me the fuck up. Or B, you sit there and leverage your leverage in the situation and spot and say, if you're not going to guarantee it, then you're going to give me a shit ton of that money up front. 50 to 60% of it being fully guaranteed at time of signing, signing bonus, NFL type of shit. Because that's basically what Vince McMahon and Nick Conn are doing now with their talent contracts. It's NFL shit. Like if you saw a report tomorrow that said, hey, X wrestler is getting $5 million a year from WWE, unless you hear something about guaranteed fully or no, no cut clause, that's all bullshit. So why not get as much money as you can out of the deal immediately? And if that means that you're only getting a downside guarantee of a couple hundred thousand a year, but you got all this money up front, who gives a fuck? Get your money while you can, boys and gals. So if Kevin Owens wanted to resign with WWE, that's his business. I'm happy for him. If he felt it was the best contract offer he could get, the best situation for his family, more power to him. When I see a report that says it's a no cut con there's no no cut clause in the contract. Do I think he effectively leveraged himself in his position as much as he possibly could? Fuck no. Am I surprised when talking about anybody in professional wrestling failing to understand their leverage, especially the modern wrestlers? Hell no. The old school cats, the one thing they used to be able to do, they knew how to exercise leverage, brother. They knew how to get money. They knew how to get paid. Favorite nations and all that other shit. But to those that are shitting on Kevin Owens for making the decision to re-sign with WWE, get a life. It was his decision to make, and in nine months, a year, year and a half, you may very well be proven correct. But it doesn't affect your life, so just move the hell on.